We have to stop doing this because it's destroying our relationships with each other. Hey, welcome back to the Reflecting Redemption YouTube channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and check out all of our other videos. We have a couple of cool playlists out here for you. And today we're starting a new series in our Monday morning devotions. This is all about surviving and thriving through our struggles. I wanted to have a more broad uh, take on this and how we survive these struggles, but also thrive within them. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and stick around and check out the description box. It'll have a link to today's blog post where you can read first step in surviving and thriving through struggles. When we start working on ourselves and our abilities to survive and thrive through the struggles that we have, it's important to realize that this is not natural. It is not going to come easy and it's not going to be simple. Whatever it is that we're struggling with, it is a struggle. It is not going to be an easy obstacle to overcome. It's a struggle for a reason. It's because it's really hard. So as we are starting to look into this uh, whole aspect of working through these things and building ourselves through these things, the first step in that is to focus on celebrating people and stop being jealous. The Bible says in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. God requires us to support each other, no matter what it is we're going through. We're not to judge each other and tear each other down. We are to team up and come side by side and be joyful with those that are joyful and mourn with those that are mourning. And it is so essential that we do this. If we get in this mentality of, I can't believe they got that new house. I can't believe they bought that new car. Why is she pregnant and I'm not? Why are they doing this vacation and I'm not? Or they make much, so much money and I don't make that much money. If we get stuck in this cycle of constantly judging each other's situations and constantly being bitter and jealous toward each other, it's just going to have this terrible root of bitterness inside of us and it's going to destroy our relationships. It's going to destroy our relationship with the Lord. It's going to destroy our joy on the inside and we have to stop it. We can't let it destroy us. We have to find a way to take those things that are frustrating and things that we're struggling with whether it be a financial struggle, an infertility struggle, a health struggle, whatever you fill in the blank as your struggle, it can't be what Satan uses to destroy your relationships. It has to be turned and flipped into a strength in some way. You have to see your weakness as God's strength and how he makes his strength perfect in your weakness. We have to Stop comparing ourselves to other people. Everyone's life is supposed to be different. We are different on purpose, which is one of my favorite slogans there ever will be because no one is supposed to be a carbon copy of someone else. Our journeys, our lives, our callings, they're all supposed to be different. And that's for a reason. That's so we can have a greater reach out into the world. So whatever God has allowed to come into your life as a struggle, he intends to use that for his honor and his glory. Don't ever forget about that. Whatever it is, it's supposed to glorify God. And if you lose sight of that, then the whole struggle loses its entire purpose. God, of course, doesn't create struggle and he doesn't give us struggle, but he does allow it. And he allows it for a good reason so that it can work within us patience and kindness and love, compassion and empathy toward other people in our life. Yes, your struggle is very real, but God is the author and finisher of our faith in our entire life. He knows the story beginning to end and he knows exactly what that struggle is gonna work within in you to help someone else come through their struggle. We're not here to live a selfish existence just for number one, just for us. We are here to help each other, whether that be through advice or sharing what we've gone through or camaraderie as someone else is walking that road with us. We are here to build community and to be there for each. So that means if I get a victory, you should celebrate with me. If you get a victory, I should celebrate with you. Very, very important. 
It also means that if I face a really hard time and I'm in the valley and weeping, then you need to come down in there with me and weep with me. And it also means that if you're in a weeping place, I need to come down to you and weep with you. And that's only going to strengthen our bonds, strengthen our relationships, and help us overall be more effective for the cause of Christ. Because remember, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is that we know the Lord and are known of Him and that we have given our hearts to Him and been saved. For a time in my life, I struggled with every pregnancy announcement that I heard, every Mother's Day celebration, everything coming and going on the topic of pregnancy, birth, and child rearing. It was all very, very hard and that root of bitterness kept trying to work its way into my heart to steal my joy and to make me a really angry, bitter person. And it took a lot of strength and a lot of help from the Lord to overcome that root of bitterness and to celebrate with others who maybe they had exactly what I wanted, but to realize that God in his mercy and in his wisdom has a perfect plan for me and for my life. And I can see his hand working in every single moment of my life. And I would ask you that question, can you see the hand of God at work in your life? If not, my question to you is, do you have a personal relationship with him as savior? If not, that is your foundation point. And from that place, God can work all things together for your good because you love him and because you honor him with your life. It's very hard to be vulnerable and talk about the things that we're dealing with every day. I had a really good friend ask me one day, how are you handling all of this and how are you keeping your emotions together so well? And my answer was pretty simple because one day when it's my turn, they'll celebrate with me. So I'm celebrating with them so that one day they will celebrate greatly with me. Someday you may close on your dream house. You may get the financial security that you've been praying for. You may be the one with the new car in the driveway and you may be the one with the positive pregnancy test. Whatever it is that you've prayed for, longed for, and hoped for, if there comes a day when the Lord fulfills that in your life, there will be a community of people there to celebrate with you. There should be a community of people there to celebrate with you. So start celebrating with them today so that when your day comes, they are there to celebrate with you. So let's celebrate each other's victories today. Let's stand with each other through every trial, every struggle. Let's rejoice and weep and be vulnerable with each other, build relationships and communities that are strong. And it's all for God's glory, all to show more people the goodness of God and to point more people to Jesus and what he's done for us. Put envy aside and focus on being grateful and being present in those relationships. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm so glad you were here. Please leave a comment and let me know what you thought of today's video and any advice that you have for someone who might be in the middle of a struggle right now. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you again really soon. Bye.